Well, hello, folks, and welcome to A Sportsman's Life. I'm Luke Clayton and my two good buddies. Jeff Rice. And Larry Weissen, and we're so proud that you're with us this week. I'll be very honest with you. I have no idea where we're going. There is no telling, but it's going to be fun. We're going to have a good time, folks. Stay tuned. We have another great adventure on A Sportsman's Life coming your way. Hi folks, it's your old buddy Luke Clayton and welcome to our outdoor show today. Jeff Rice is going to be with us in a little bit. I thought I'd kick the show off right here at camp. This is a little cabin right here behind my house out in the trees where I do a lot of my writing and radio stuff and just get out here and hang out. I do a lot of outdoor cooking right here too folks. We're going to make some camp cornbread. Uh, and if you track with me, it's something anybody can do, but there's a utensil that you're going to need to do it like I do it. You ever seen one of these? That's uh, an omelet maker. This one belonged to my uncle, and I've had it since 1964, when I was 14 years old. I have made more cornbread in this than you can imagine. We'll take some close-up shots of this in a little bit, but it's basically an omelet maker. You put your, uh, put your batter in the bottom, shut the lid, and cook it for about, oh, about eight minutes on one side. You can look and see when it's getting crispy. Then you flip it, and cook it on the other side. We've got a camp stove out here that we're going to cook this on. So an omelet maker, you need one of those. Of course you can cook this in a Dutch kettle too or a skillet with a lid, uh, you know, a good tight fitting lid, but these things are worth their weight in gold and you can still find them in a lot of kitchen shops, you know, stores that have kitchen utensils. I found one. This one, I've got it already loaded up with, with batter, but this is one right here that I uh, I bought a couple of years ago. I hate to retire Old Faithful right here, but I use this one a lot right now. But this one works as good as it did back in 1964. So basically, load it up, you know, with a little packet of cornbread mix is all you really need. Now, I made jalapeno cornbread, chipped up some jalapenos and put in the mix. So we're going to actually fire this up. Uh, you can't see the, the cooking area, but I'm going to show it to you in just a minute. Let it cook about eight minutes on one side until it starts getting really crispy. Flip the omelet maker, let it cook, and then flip it over and cook it on this side for about eight minutes. You'll be able to tell when the cornbread's done. Then we're going to serve it up with some uh, black-eyed peas. And you remember that ham that we cooked about two weeks ago, the, the sugar-cured smoked ham? We're going to, these peas have got some of that ham chopped up in there. They're going to be awesome. Of course, I've done a little quality control. I've done a little testing on all this before I show you. But uh, let me give you a close-up look at our uh, the way what we're cooking it in with the little stove out here. And then I will show you the finished product. Jeff will be with us, and then we'll move forward with our show. But I thought this might be a good way to kick things off and give you a new way to, you know, to make cornbread at camp. Well, folks, here we go. Here's the finished product. Let me know if you think you could make a meal out of this. Get a good close-up look of this jalapeno cornbread. That's enough to feed about, oh, three good pieces of cornbread. And how about this? You remember that uh, smoked cured ham that we made, oh, about two weeks ago? Here it is cooked up in some black-eyed peas. Check this out. Oh yeah, uh, to be honest with you, I've already tested this, of course, to make, you know, a little quality control. What do you say we move on to the rest of our outdoor show? Thought it would be good to kick it off with a little outdoor cooking. All done right out here in the, in the, in the little cabin behind the house where I spend a lot of my time when I'm out here around the house doing filming and also do a lot of writing back out here.
Can you believe that? <sighs> Dropped in. Folks, good morning. Welcome to A Sportsman's Life. We are sitting out here on a beautiful end of May uh, weekend and uh, probably in the upper 60s. Beautiful, beautiful morning. I knew these hogs were coming in. As you saw there, I flipped the picture of the uh, this hog coming in from the trail cam there. And uh, that's the nice thing about these uh, trail cameras is we know exactly when these hogs are coming and going. So got us a nice, uh, nice ham on the ground down there. So we're gonna go out and check it out. But let's talk a little bit about what we shot him with. This is the uh, Air Force Air Guns Texan 45 carbine. And let me tell you, friends, these are amazing guns. Uh, for an air gun, you, you can air this baby up. You get three, four shots. All we needed was one. So, um, man, what a lot of fun. I just got a little chair here, brought my thermocell. Uh, really, I don't think there's any mosquitoes anyway. There's a nice breeze this morning. So we thought we'd come and sit. Uh, you know, we're, we're sitting at this old tree here. You've seen Luke shoot three or four hogs from this spot right here. This, I think this, this is Luke's favorite little spot, but you can bring a little chair, sit down here. You're 45, 50 yards from the feeder. It's an absolutely perfect spot. So we saw some, some deer this morning. Of course, we got uh, some trail camp picks as well, as you saw there. And uh, man, just an absolutely gorgeous morning. So stay tuned, folks. We've got a great show coming up again for you this week here in our Sportsman's Life. Just out having fun, living the dream. Texan 45 Carbine Air Force Air Guns. Get you one of these guys. They're great guns. They're just a lot of fun to hunt with. Let's go check out that hog. on the ground but 120 pound sow which in my opinion is about the perfect size for, for putting on the smoker uh, we'll take the hams and the back strap out of this uh, this sow and we will process it and put it to good use this is great meat friends what an absolutely spectacular morning it is uh, partly cloudy uh, the Sun has just come up I, I mean literally the feeder went off and, and you saw the deer come in and of course uh, this guy ran him out and uh, she wanted her fill, but uh, she took a uh, bullet from the uh, Air Force Air Guns Texan uh, 45 caliber carbine. This is a great little gun. I tell you what, did an absolute perfect job Sometimes on that sow. Uh, sneaking out like this and, and do, doing a quick morning hunt. I've, you know, we've got the Memorial Weekend coming up here and a lot of things to do, family fun and, and other things, but taking the time to just slip out I mean, I wasn't out here an hour. My wife's still sleeping and it's early morning. Feeder went off, deer came in, hogs came in, and uh, well, we, we got an opportunity of taking a, a perfect specimen for the smoker, which by the way, will go on the smoker later this afternoon. So folks, stay tuned. We got a lot of fun and exciting stuff coming up on A Sportsman's Life. Well folks, you know, hunting with and shooting big bore air guns has become really popular, but there's still a lot of folks that have not learned the basics of it. This is an Air Force Air Guns Texan that I hunt with a great deal. I, last three weeks, I think I've killed two hogs with it. And I've killed a lot of game with it. They're very powerful. But uh, I've also used the, the Seneca Dragon Claw, the 50 caliber for shooting the air bolts. It'll also shoot bullets, another great gun. But I want to tell you some nuts and bolts things about air guns. If you have a PCP air gun, that's the air guns that air up with pressure with a there's a foster valve and this is a compressor here. You're going to have to figure out a way to keep a supply of air. Now, this is the way that a lot of people do it. This is an air tank. You know, you can pressure it up. Works great. But you're still going to have to have a compressor somewhere. Somebody's got to have to have a compressor to put air in that tank so you can take it in the field with you. I still use air tank a good bit, but I've come to really depend on this little portable compressor. Uh, so I keep it, I'll pressurize my gun up to, you know, I actually, this uh, Texan goes to a little over 3600 PSI. And all that pressure, folks, is right here. Pressure it up with a, right here at this fitting, 
and this is where your pressure is. It's good for about three shots on game, killing game, three hard shots. Now, I use my compressor at home at the, when I'm shooting in at the range or whatever to side it in, because all I have to do is plug this into my truck, AC or DC, plug it into electrical current, fill it up. Now, what I've started doing is taking only this and not carrying my tank all every time. Take this with me. Uh, I pressure it up at home. I've got you know plenty of pressure for three killing shots. Who's going to need that when you're hunting hogs or deer? Uh, you might need two, maybe. But uh, so that's that's it simplified things for me a great deal. Take this with you. Go out to the to where you're hunting, uh, wherever you're hunting. You've got your gun pressured up. It's going to be good for three shots plus, really, but three what I call three killing shots on game, hog, deer, that kind of game, that size game. So just a tip for you, you got to have air, but investing in a uh, portable compressor like this to me is the way to go. This is called a Nomad uh, Pyramid Air. You can get everything from the rifles to everything you need. It's a one-stop shop for everything air gun related. Go to PyramidAir.com. All this stuff, if you're going to get into air gun shooting, is very, very important and things that I've learned <clears throat> about several years ago, I became hunting editor for, I guess the only uh, big bore or air gun magazine in the country, air gun hobbyist. And through those years, I've learned a lot from people that really do know a lot about uh, air guns. You know, not only the big bores, but the smaller calibers too. So we'll take a little bit closer look at all this stuff. I hope it helps you a little bit and maybe helps you decide if you want to get into big bore air gun hunting. It's not all I do, but I do a lot of it. I still hunt with a bow and a centerfire rifle. As an old outdoor rider, it helps me a lot to be more versatile. But I absolutely love hunting with the big bore air guns. Okay, folks, you can hear that Nomad running. It'll take it maybe several minutes to pressure this uh, air rifle, this big bore, up to, I'm going to pressure it up to about 3,300 right now. You can pressure them up to 36, as I mentioned before. Here at Double Nickel Taxidermy. Probably hear tax numbers working in the background occasionally, but <laughs> with, uh, with John Wilson with the Double Nickel Taxidermy, as I said, and John, right now we've got a lot of folks getting ready to go bear hunting. Unfortunately, we can't get into some of the areas in, in Canada right now, but there are bear hunts going on here in the States, particularly up in Canada. If somebody wanted to have a full body mount done of a black bear, or say you go to Africa, sure. and you take an unbelievable warthog such as this, what's, what's the best way to, sure. to make sure that you here at Double Nickel get that skin and skull right. intact right. like it needs to be. Well, there, there's a few things you can do as the hunter to uh, help us give you a mount that's going to be on your wall or on the ground if it's a life-size mount, uh, and it'll make it look the best. Some of those things are, before you go, have an idea of where you want to put the animal. Because once you harvest your, your trophy, if you're putting it high up on the wall, you don't want to make cuts underneath the animal ventrally because we'll have to stitch all that up and it's possible it could be seen. So you'd want to skin an animal like that down the back dorsally. Um, inversely, if you, if you want to put your, your mount low like this warthog here, you may want to go ahead and skin it from the bottom because you won't be seeing that in the mount. Whereas if you skinned it down the back, it would be showing. So little things like that will, will produce a better mount for you and uh, you'll be much happier and pleased with it uh, at your home. So those types of things, good pictures, uh, for example, this warthog, having reference pictures, uh, the size of the warts, what the tusks look like, anything like that that you maybe not necessarily would do for a, a shoulder mount, those little details will come into play and having a, a general pose picked out. Uh, is always good prior. Um, that may help you with your shot placement um, in the animal to, to hide any damage that may occur from the, the bullet wound. 
And John, you can go to your website too yes, to learn more about this, can't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, our website is doublenickeltaxidermy.com, all one word. And uh, our phone number here at the shop is 830-237-9481. We'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Well, folks, thanks again for joining us on this week's show. Another fun and exciting adventure. Starting at the beginning of the show, we had no clue what we were going to do, but we came up with something. We had a whole heck of a lot of fun. Didn't we, boys? I'll say yes. Yeah. Always. <laughs> Always. I'll say we had a great time, but I'll say this, so say this. I wish we were staying around a little bit longer today. No doubt. So remember to watch us next week right here on A Sportsman's Life. And a special thanks to these fine sponsors. Air Force Air Guns, B&B Charcoal, Dallas Safari Club, Hornaday, Pyramid Air, Nielsen Specialty Ammo, Sightmark, Smokin' Tex, Snap Block Hunting Blinds, Texas Raised Hunting Products, and Striper Express.